Hello, everybody. My name is Robin Young, and I'm the publisher of Orthopedics This Week. And here are the top 10 orthopedic and spine stories. But before I begin, I do want to make a comment about my background. That happens to be the top of Mount Washington, which this past week set the world's record for the coldest spot ever recorded on Earth, minus 108 degrees Fahrenheit. So while I'm telling you these top stories, uh, you get to look at the top of Mount Washington on the day, the very day it set the world's record. All right, so starting at number 10, yay, the power rankings. This is where we survey 26 of the largest orthopedic and spine companies in the world. This represents about 80% of all the suppliers in this $25 billion industry, and we rank the top 10 in rank order. So be sure to check out either our Power Rankings podcast or our website, ryortho.com. So number nine is the really is a story that represents the hiring explosion, specifically in the ASC world, but specifically at Newport Beach's California, uh, TRIA's Medical uh, Ambulatory Surgery Center. ASCs, of course, are a massive trend. And here is a specific example, a specific story that illustrates how ASCs are transforming musculoskeletal care. And this story about their staffing increases gives a good sense of that. Our number eight story is a new study that asks the provocative question, at least if you're a podiatric surgeon, does deploying crossing screws to treat hallux valgus deformity reduce your rates of fusion? Not what you want. You want it the other direction. This multi-center study of 166 patients has some answers. Really worth reading. And of course, we have it at ryortho.com. Our number seven story is a kind of an intuitive story, I guess. It's a new study that looked at the connection between a pitcher's pitch velocity and elbow injury. You would think that the harder you throw, the more likely it is you're going to hurt your arm. Well, now we have the data and we have it on rwhiteortho.com. Our number six story comes out of B. Bronze Surgical Division, Escalap, which just partnered with QMed Innovations to bring digital tools to the surgery suite. Virtually every industry these days is digitizing at a rapid rate. If you've gone to the airport recently and tried to rent a rental car, you know it's going digital as well, as are your bank. Everything in the world is going digital, of course. So is orthopedic surgery. And this story out of Escalab and QMed Innovations, this firm brings digital tools to the surgery suite. This is part of a big trend. Our number five story is news that the FDA has cleared the very first and only. And of course, I'm, that's a little redundant. If you're the very first, of course, you're going to be the only threaded distal fibula, fibula intramedullary nail. It's from Conventus Flower Orthopedics. It's a pretty interesting innovation. Do check it out. And our number four story is a really interesting study from the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia. Here, the research team looked at intraoperative lumbar lordosis and segmental lordosis and wondered if, using those data points, a surgeon might actually be able to predict patient outcomes. Interesting, right? Go to ryortho.com and we will tell you what they found out. Our right, number three story is news from the folks at Total Joint Orthopedics, also known as TJO in Utah, about yet another large joint material innovation. Now, TJO is really leading the way these days in innovation from a material sciences perspective. At the risk of butchering these terms, here's what's special about this implant. The material is a cross-linked ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. That by itself is not novel. However, it also blends dicumyl, dicumyl, I told you, dicumyl peroxide and vitamin E, and then uses their own proprietary cross-linking approach to blend these materials. What they deliver is higher wire resistant and material stability. Really interesting. Be sure to check it out, of course rwayortho.com. And our number two story this week, a new CPT add-on code has just been released to pay for a two-level lumbar total disc replacement. Kudos to the team at Sentinel Spine that really is setting the standard for everybody. They ran the regulatory gauntlet to get this done. Very helpful and should hopefully make reimbursement a little bit easier for the patient and their doctors. 
And our number one story this week is from the University of Kentucky College of Medicine, where a research team has appears to have found a sadly common statistical problem that could cause physicians to misinterpret peer review research findings. Yikes. So here's the basic issue. How close to the real world patient characteristics are these study groups in randomized control studies? I know you can guess the answer, not much. That's a problem. Seriously, if you're gonna rely on that data, it really needs to reflect what you see every day in your practice. There's a lot more to this story. That's why it's number one. We do have all the details. So for all of this and much more, go to ryortho.com. Thank you all very much. I hope you have a great week.